It's Friday night football at the Jalan Basar Stadium and on this cool and breezy evening we see Woodlands Wellington pitching their skills against Senkang Pongal. Hi there, my name is Angelique Teo and welcome to Channel 5's exclusive coverage of the NTUC Income Yos S League. Now Woodlands Wellington have targeted a top six finish this season but with Geelong 11 points ahead of them in sixth place the Rams have an uphill task ahead of them and they could start collecting the points against Senkang Pongal tonight. But the Dolphins have held them to two goalless draws in two previous league encounters and with their key players back Senkang Pongol will be hoping for better results against Woodlands Wellington tonight. And now your match commentators for this Friday evening P.N. Savaji and Paul Maysfield. Welcome to the Jalambasar Stadium. We're expecting high drama here. It's two sides which are playing for a lot of pride. It's also one side, Woodlands Wellington, looking to prepare themselves for the cup final. And with that in mind, two changes have been made to this Woodlands side that lost 2-1 at SAF Warriors just last week. In comes Yazid Yassin back in goal. And also coming back in is Ismadi Mukhtar, who will just anchor the middle of the part there along with Hazrin Jelani and Nakamura. Pretty much a 4-3-3, quite an attack-minded lineup. Obviously Partey won the leading scorer for Woodlands with nine goals so far this season. Sale Sale on the left-hand side has also scored a couple of goals, so watch out for him as well. Quick look down the bench and of course all eyes looking straight at Lacard. Abdel Hadi, he unfortunately is struggling to shake off an injury that he's had all season long. And saying that, he's still managed to bag six goals this year for the Rams. Senkang Pungal make two changes as well. Back in after suspension is Reginaldo, the Brazilian striker. He comes back in courtesy of Mazalan going out. Winston Yap as well, who was struggling with injury in the last game. He will anchor the central defence along with Ratna Sufyan. Norazli Ali Imran will make up that back four. But look out for Simic in the middle of the park. But all eyes will be on the Brazilian, Reginaldo. Not as much strength in depth on the bench for Senkang Pungol. But there are a few players there that are looking to come through. So Yandi Naib has been left out, so he may have to come on and prove a point to his manager, who is only in charge, Suwandi Ahmad, for his third game with his new club. There's another man under a little bit of pressure at the moment, Jorg Steimer, trying to make do with what he can at the moment. It's a side that has struggled all year long, never without incident at Woodlands, but after speaking to him before the game, he was quietly confident and feels that he's got the respect of the players and that they've been working incredibly hard looking forward to that date in November which will see them go to the cup final referee Zaid Hussein he will take charge of this game you just see him strolling out to the center of the pitch Woodlands Wellington currently lying in ninth position Senkang Pungol in 11th they're only two points above Balastir Khalsa, so a win really here for Senkang is a must, but we do know one thing, they have struggled all year long to find the back of the net, they are the lowest scoring side in the S League with only 10 goals, so something has to change there if they are to try and jump up the table and try and chase down and catch Dalian Shida. As mentioned, Pian Savaji joins me in the commentary position, the Home United coach Savaji, what are we expecting from today? Woodlands, will they go full out knowing that they've got a big day up in November? And Senkang really are playing for their careers. I think they will go flat out. I think they want to get out from where they are right now. They are positioned eighth in the table. Uh, they would like to get uh, uh, close up to Young Lions, who are six points ahead of them. Three points ahead, three points ahead of them. So I'm sure that they'll give, go all out in this match. 
It is Woodlands that get us underway. Partey one just flicks it out wide. It's just a little bit too far though, straight away for Ismadi Mukhtar. You know, uh, Paul, we see varying kickoffs uh, all over the world. Uh, even just now, we see a, a kickoff and we just playing it forward and then giving possession away to the opponents. And then there are some, some teams who just try to keep it, play it back. Uh, pass the ball yeah, around. Pass the ball around and maybe for confidence. So it's interesting sometimes when you see this. I think one of the daftest ones I ever saw was the coach that was in charge of Woodlands, Matt Brown, where they actually built a set play around a kickoff at the beginning of the game. Playing at Gaylang, they were at home. I'll never forget because there was a big argument in the tunnel before with Scott O'Donnell, Darren Stewart and Matt Brown who said that he was a coach at Liverpool and it transpired that he wasn't. That's a great ball whipped in though but no one attacking the far post. Like you say, it's interesting and it just sets a tone, doesn't it, in a scene for what teams are going to do. So if that's anything to go by from Woodlands, lumping that ball forwards and trying to chase down and get in there, then we might be in for a long game here. Yeah, they got someone like Fadzu Hasni who up front who, who chase every ball, even chase lost courses. So it'll be good to see how they uh, get on in this game. A little bit tight there in the centre of the park, but easily mopped up by Yamamoto. Rolls it back, long ball forward from Joey Sim. Zai doing well with the foot in there, but conceding possession. But again, it's just a little bit too bogged down there in the centre. Simic it was that just couldn't make anything happen there. Arte one just rolling the ball wide that's a great ball threaded through for Nakamura the cross comes in it's a deep one but there's no one attacking it he comes to the edge of the box Cesale Cesale shoots blocked down an important block as well it was there's the Yusuf who then sends a nice ball forwards Ginaldo being very, very closely marked by Dronka, who yet again has been a stalwart at the back for Woodlands. Always dependable. You know what you're going to get from Dronka. Adding to the mix, five goals. He scored more than what half of what Senkang have scored this season. That's not bad for a centre half. Yeah, I think Dronka has done very well since he came in what three years ago, four years ago when Karim Bencherifa was the coach. Uh, very solid at the back. And when you get your centre back doing a sterling job at the back and scoring goals, what more can you ask for? Senkang that are looking to try and build things up. And even just rolling it back. And again, Joey Sim with a long ball forwards. A little bit of a battle going on there. Hazrin Jelani was the one putting the challenge in. But you can see the red shirts not afraid to go forwards. There's five shirts there looking to try and bear down on goal. And his summary plays it wide. Bazali Jahari puts it into the box and Dronka just gets a big toe to that one and Reginaldo nearly took his head off. <laughs> He's entitled to go for that ball though. Yeah, he, he is because the ball was hanging up in the air. Uh, and the defender Azmi Mahmoud expected, or rather Dronka expected the, the challenge from him. Put his head there, got a knock for his uh, efforts. As all good defenders will say, that's part of the job. Sometimes you have to put your head there where it hurts. That's exactly what Dronka did on that occasion. No means a disgraceful result, the last one that Woodlands Wellington had. A 2-1 defeat at the Chao Kang Stadium to the SAF Warriors. Of course, are sitting in second position, two points behind the Super Reds. Savage's home United are just one point behind SAF as well. So. Very, very tight at the top of the S-League. Looks as though we're going to go all the way down to the wire. Nice little layoff there from Jeremy. Fortunately, though, the red shirts again smother in the middle of the park. His Simic. Fortunately, the last touch came off him, so that's going to be a throw for Woodlands. Uh, the, the match has started at a very good, quick pace. Both teams are trying to feel each other out. And you can see that there's a lot of frenzied activity in the middle of the park. And let's see who puts his foot on the ball and tries to settle things down. It's Partey one with a nice turn. Just rolling it forwards. Unfortunately, though, the spin into the hole from Jeremy meant that the ball didn't find him. Harry Summary is dropping very, very deep. Supposed to be playing up top with Reginaldo. It's 
going to be a throw in. That header harmlessly going back. And as he goes, he will have a little touch of the ball. One thing you can be assured of though when Woodlands Wellington plays the support and the fans have made the trip down from Woodlands which is always nice to see always in good voice good spirit and there they are quite passionate up there about their football At times they have been knocking on the door of success and some would feel it's long overdue They'll have a chance in November to put things right there in the cup final. Take on the SAF Warriors. What should be another belting game as well. Simic with the ball played in. An angle ball. That's good defending though from Zaid. Tucking in as all good fullbacks do. Nice turn from Cesare. The game gets crowded out though. There really does seem to be a pressing game being played by Senkang. Savaji, where they're not allowing the time and space on the ball for Woodlands. Yes, uh, they realise that uh, Woodlands is quite a skillful side with Pakte Won, Aki, Aki Hiro and company in Sazali. So they know that if they give them time and space, they would uh, murder them. So I think they've, they've taken the right decision by putting a lot of pressure on them and not allowing them to settle on the ball. Fadzli just tucks it up the line. Might just have a little bit too much on it though for Fazali. Mr. Nyap it was who has been brought back into the side. The ball travels very hard on this pitch. I know we've, we've mentioned this before many times on this artificial pitch. So when you play balls into space, it has to be at the right uh, weight, right pace, so that the running player has a chance to at least get a touch on the ball. There's a hit out from Nakamura, unfortunately. No one chasing that one down. So this game settling and developing into a pattern. And again, Savage is a very good point you brought up at the start. It, it could be epitomised from the kickoff where the ball was given away because both sides are being guilty at the moment of giving it away a little bit cheaply. That's a nice ball tucked in the corner though, looking for Reginaldo. There's the ever steady drunker though. No call for Nakamura, who loses out. That will mean that is someone who can pick the ball up and again giving it away far too cheaply. Nakamura tries to get it out of his feet. Zaya gets caught there. That was a late challenge as well. The refs allowed play to go on. It did look as though it was a very, very strong, committed challenge from Eduardo. Hasrin Jelani just waiting for somebody to make the move ahead of him. That's a strong, strong challenge. The free right on the spot and gives the free kick. Yamamoto in a little bit too overzealous. Wanting to win that ball back quickly. There's acres of space over here on the left-hand side if they can find Zaid with the ball. They elect it on the right-hand side. Hazrin Jelani with the ball forwards, looking for Jerry. Hoisted in the air from Ali Imran. And now it's going to come to nothing because it was just a nothing challenge, really. So a little bit sloppy from both sides, as we've just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, again, I, as I mentioned earlier, the pitch doesn't make it easy to play good, decent football uh, because of the, the pace uh, that it causes the ball to travel in. Uh, Woodlands would do well for them if they, they try keeping the ball down, passing it, because they've got some players out there, Akihiro, Pak Tehun, Fadzu himself, and also Sazali who can, on their day, uh, create magic with the ball. We just saw a shot there of Swandi Amadou, he's in charge of this Senkang side. Got relieved of his duties at Gombak where Sasi Kumar took the reins. John Yap then elected to bring in Darren Stewart, and what a masterstroke that's proved to be, because Gombak 
The only time that they've lost is when Darren was out recruiting players down in Australia for next season. But Sashi has done such a good job there, and John Yap bringing in the experience of Darren Stewart, really proving it's worth it, Savaji. I think, yeah, I think they've, they've worked very well as a, as a pair. Uh, Sash, Sashi with his uh, uh, youthful exuberance, if you can call it. That. He's had a couple of years' experience in the COEs, uh, and now he's come up, stood up, and then uh, with Darren there to offer him advice. At the moment, that's what Darren is doing, just offering advice because Sunny Sassi runs the show. So it's good to see that these two guys are working well, and Gombak has always uh, flattered to deceive because they've always had the players, they've always had the talent. Somehow they don't do it. Maybe this year they can, and next year, both two, next, these two years, they can do something. Same could be said of Woodlands. They're always there or thereabouts, that much we do know. Will it be their year to win a trophy? That's a lovely little ball from Reginaldo. And it's somebody keeping the ball. Luis Eduardo rolling the ball back. That's spread wide from Yamamoto, but behind everyone, so that's a poor ball. So again, the players are left in that it's not a football, it's a hot potato, and nobody wants to get it down and keep possession. Teams that have to play at Jalambasa uh, Paul still try and try and book the stadium for a couple of days to try and familiarize themselves during training. So I'm sure that will help them. He comes out on the overlap. Nice ball played into the box. Ali Imran's there, heads it clear. Just flicked it wide. Here is Rosali Johari. Him just to go forwards wasn't on, so Johari does the sensible thing and keeps possession which will obviously give the side a little bit of confidence, keeping possession of the ball and passing it around. Ali Sumri. Again, sensible this from Senkan, keeping the ball, trying to work an opening. No free kick given there. Dronka in with a challenge, a strong one as well. Never really going to be a free kick, though. Junka with the header. It's a poor touch there from Yamamoto, but did well to win the ball back. Wins the throw as well. Will he be a hero tonight? He will be if he can get on the score sheet. He has scored a couple of goals from deep positions uh, for Sengkang. Started off the season as a centre back, but we have pushed him into midfield. Done very well there because he sits in front of the back four. He, he takes. He's always looking for the ball, and he keeps the ball under pressure quite well too. Coming deep yet again is Harry Sumri. He clips it forward. Reginaldo, closely marked by Dronka, who puts a no-nonsense challenge in him. Reginaldo not happy with that at all. You can see there. <laughs> if only look, looks could kill. <laughs> But again, Donka, see, he's given a free kick very far away from the penalty box. He's just telling Reginaldo, look, I'm around, mate. Be careful, I'm still behind you, I'm just looking after you. He always puts that thought into the, the attacker's mind then. Is the defender right up my backside as he dropped off? And sometimes some attackers can't handle that. Nice little ball thread into the box, though, but just trying to be a little bit too intricate in the box and the flick didn't come off there from Rosali Jahari, tucked in from the left-hand side. Not a bad opening, 14 minutes then. It's been an open game, we have to say that much. Yeah, there may not be any goal mouth uh, chances, but you can see that, just like the earlier move, they're trying to create some openings, uh, although both teams, especially the rear guards, are very tight at the back. One just dropping into a right back position just to receive the ball and let's Jerry go up and now they've switched back as Dronkat looks to switch this one and finds Park. That switch seemed to work as Jerry goes on the overlap. Little cross change there with Ismadi. Okay, one again. Fires it to this near side. Zaid on the chest. Back to Dronkat. Nice ball, nice little layoff, and that was unlucky there. Cesale 
looking to get to the byline, checks back in, goes on the outside again, and you can't help but wonder there, Savaji, that once he gets to that byline, he has to whip it in rather than checking back. He, he should have. I'm sure uh, Jorg is tearing his hair out uh, for that because Sazar did so well to get past his man and in a position to send the ball in. But his forwards were in the box looking for that cross. It never came and then he just ran out for a uh, goal kick. Three points here for Senkang would move them on to 18. That would be three points behind Dali and Shida, who they actually play in their next game. So a real chance for them to close the gap in this game and the next game. Try and creep a little bit further up the table. A lot, sorry, Joe, no, sorry, no, a, no, lot no. Of, a lot we expected uh, of Simic and uh, the captain for Senkang because he has caught some great goals from distance and you can see he's with the ball there now taking this free kick he figures in all of the attacking play so a lot will depend on how he influences this game it's a good delivery towering header though of Dronka under a little bit of pressure from Reginaldo heads that, that's going to be a corner I think these two, uh, Reginaldo and uh, Donka, they will be having a very interesting battle today. One trying to stop the other from scoring. And maybe the same at the other end when Donka goes forward for a set play. This one fired into that near post area. Reginaldo looking for the handball and the referee just waving it on. Oh, that's a poor and a bad mistake from Winston Yap. He's having a chase back now. Pate one on the burst. Pate one flicks it just wide. Ali Imran didn't get anything on the ball. Joey Sim had come out and committed himself, and those two are having a little conference in the six-yard box. But we would expect Pate one to score in a position like that, wouldn't we? Yes. Look, look at that. The goalkeeper out of his line. Uh, open goal, <laughs> gaping at him, but put it out. Now the first real chance of this game, and he come in. Almost 18 minutes into the game. Golden opportunity for Woodlands to take the lead. Just picking the ball up from the back. So Woodland's looking to try and build on what they just created. It's a quick counter attack. That has to be said. That's an awful ball played forward from Azmi Mahmoud. It's needed to be zipped in. There's Jerry Bartholomew who flicks it forwards. Ali Imran this time makes absolutely no mistake and puts his foot right through it. Reginaldo a little bit close there and the two of them having a conflap. Reginaldo and Azmi Mahmoud. A little bit of handbags going on there, I think. Ronka fires it forwards. It's a nice ball as well, looking for Ismadi. Ismadi plays it wide to Park Taewon and then goes on the overlay. Still Park. Park Taewon just rolls it back to Nakamura. Bartholomew's. Goes on the overlap, wants the return, can he get there? Unfortunately, he was just a little bit too far ahead of him, but that's better play from Woodlands, trying to create the opening out wide and looking to try and get a cross in. Yes, Paul, I think uh, Woodlands have been playing the better football up to this uh, 20 minutes. Uh, they are looking for the opportunity to break past the uh, static black back line of Senkang, trying to go down the flank, get behind the defence. So, yes, I think Woodlands has been playing the better football up to now. Woodlands 
Jones win the throw right on the halfway line. Oh, that was a poor first touch by Rosali, and you can't blame the pitch for that. <laughs> the reason we're laughing is, as a player, I think you know and understand exactly what Savaji said there. The player knows himself, he should have done a lot better. The player would have blamed the pitch himself, but unfortunately, in certain positions like that and situations, there is only one person to blame. <laughs> Long throw, Ali Imran down the line. Held on by a Woodlands player, no foul given. So the referee being consistent in this one, allowing the game to ebb and flow. At least the players know where they stand, which is why strong officiating is called for. Nice touch, is Marty. I'll tell you one was the target. They're playing with this three up front, Sivaji, but Cesali there not pushed on enough and closing and tracking that back post down, is he? Yes, yes, I think uh, you, you said it correctly, Paul. They may be playing at the 4 3 3 with two wingers, but the winger must know when to tuck in, when to, to, to look for the flick on, the second ball, and there Cesali was really phone lacking. It's a strong challenge there. Badzu going in strong. Every right to go for that ball. To be fair, Yamamoto was strong in the challenge as well. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Just two committed players, eyes on the ball. No malice at all there. Yes, both, uh, both players are having their eyes on the ball. And Yamamoto, good professional. I know he got a knock, but he just got on, got on with the game. He got a free kick that he wanted, and he got on with the game. So much made these days, isn't there? When there's a little incident and a player stays down, and then within two seconds they sprint back onto the field. I can't help but think that maybe FIFA can look at that at some stage. Seem to be tinkering with all the other rules, so that might be one they want to have a look at. Ali Imran plays it wide. Bazali looking to get the better of Jerry, gets a cross in. The ball hadn't gone out of play. Dronka as ever, wins the header. It's a strong challenge though. Yamamoto, but again losing out. It is a feisty battle in the middle of the park where both sides are very, very committed. Nice and Yusuf rolled the ball back there. Here he is again on the ball with a little bit of time and space. Drills a lovely ball in, but well, Yazid Yassin was right on his toes, and the Singaporean custodian or the old Singaporean custodian. Wasn't going to allow a free header in his box there, but the ball's won back and Senkan can push forwards quickly. Rosali cuts inside. Got away with that one, but still managed to find Eduardo. Simic. Ali Imran, who's pushed on on the left-hand side, tucked up the line for Rosali. Rosali gets half a yard. Can he get his cross in? It's blocked and it's going to be a corner. But that's a little bit better from Senkang, it has to be said. Yes, good passage of play with Ali Imran coming, supporting from the back. And uh, Razali can always give problems on the on the flank. Um, you could see that he was always trying to get behind and cross the ball, although this time he just uh, deflected off for a corner. But they would look, I'm, I'm sure Senkang would look at Razali uh, getting getting behind on the left side and getting in crosses for Reginaldo. So this is the second corner of the game, both corners going to Senkang. This one's going to be swung in by Hadi Sumri. Alexa to hang it up there and unfortunately Simicha got under the ball so there was no way he was going to get to that and it's going to roll all the way over for a throw in. Free kick given. Again, Woodlands just elect to stroke it around at the back. Bartholomew's good forwards to Pantewan who came deep. 
Okay, and the red shirts just closing everything down in the middle of the park. Simic just rolls it wide. Well, yes, it has in a state on his line there, and Rodron could just acknowledge the fact there. Cesali losing out, Reginaldo. Still Reginaldo. Just unfortunately hit Harry Summary on the ankle. As Gelani fires one into the referee. And Nakamura picks this one up. Zaid. The instruction hold hold as he goes on the overlap. That's a nice ball inside from Cesali. Just a little bit too much on it though for Zaid. Yeah, it's good to see Zaid galloping from the left, uh, going for the overlap, asking Sazali to hold it and then making this run. Sazali saw the possibility to try to play it through, but Winston Yap was alert to cut that out. Yep, was on his toes, as you need to be as a centre half. Looking to cover your full backs, that's part of your job. Nakamura clip from behind. That will be a free kick. Akiro, his first name. Yes, Aki was looking for the free kick. You could see Hicks coming close and just put his body between the ball and the opponent and got the free kick. What can they do with this? Uh, Aki can blast it from here. They got Asmi and Ronka going up, and we have seen Ronka scoring goals from this position. It's all about the quality of delivery. Nakamura's over the ball, so is Hajrin Jelani. Well, they've had a good five minutes to debate this, the two of them, and they're still not sure on who's taking it yet, unless this is part of the plan. It is goal bound from Nakamura, but Joey Sim easily going to handle that one. Just a little bit of a long way away, and with the ball that they are using, the Mikasa ball, which is just a little bit heavier, isn't it, when you're playing on a surface like this? It is sometimes difficult to strike it 100% correctly as a player. Yes, Paul, and also I think, like you correctly mentioned, it's too far out, uh, trying to bend it. Goalkeeper has a lot of time to react to it. I would have expected him to just put it into the mixer because there was uh, the, the big boys were back uh, were up there. Simic, Eduardo, Reginaldo. Oh, as the Yusuf, what can he do? He finds Reginaldo. Are we going to see something special from him? Again, it's that strike from distance that needs to be 100% perfect for it to find the back of the net, and it wasn't, so maybe a better option just to keep possession there. It has been the second time that he's, he's done it, and uh, judging by the reaction of his teammates, he must have scored some goals either in training uh, with that kind of shot. So they are not, they're not really arguing with him, they're not, they're not chiding him for that. So probably he could be... Uh, that's what they'll be, they'll be looking for, long shots from him. Somebody with a little flick, Simic. You just look a player, it has to be said. Picks out another pass and wins the throw for Senkang. Yes, uh, Simic, when he was out because of injury, Senkang struggled big time, but when once he came back on, they were competitive, they were able to create chances, they scored goals. There's an edge with him, isn't there? Yeah. And he, he just knows what he's doing. I mean, that's a lovely little layoff. Unfortunately, Ali Imran had just strayed into an offside position. And there's no excuse for any player to be offside, especially an ex international like Ali Imran. In that position, you can see where he's looking across the yeah. line, right? When we say looking across the line there, the linesman's on this near side. The player can see every single shirt across the field of play. So all he has to do is just check his run or step back and stay on side. And I know that that is one of the pains and one of the frustrations as a coach when you're watching the game, when your players do that, particularly when it's so blatant and so obvious. There's Dronker in strong again. Reginaldo this time gets the better, but 
ways to see if Nyasli Yusuf is going to get up. Well, that'll be a respite for a few seconds. Nyasli down. So the stretchy bearers will come on. Ooh, that was a high foot. Just puts him on the shin. And you can see a little lump there. That'll just be a little bit of bruising. Part and parcel of the game, it has to be said. At times, it does happen. As you're just trying to have a few words with his players. And likewise, Swandi Ahmad having a word with his, trying to calm everybody down, get everybody playing again. That ball back from Dronka has gone from 25 yards in his own corner all the way across, and it still hasn't gone out of play yet. But he's done the right thing. He's given the ball back to Senkan, and now they restart from the back with Ratna uh, Sufyan and uh, Winston Yap trying to build up this attack. strong challenge and it results in the first yellow card of the game that one going to Azrin Jelani Jelani the player coming deep and there he is just laying the ball off and getting side down but rolling around on the floor afterwards I'm not sure about that one when he jumps to his feet <laughs> but yeah but I think Hassan was really silly to go in like that and get a yellow card for no no real no real reason. Unless he's trying to intimidate Reginaldo. That happens at his part and parcel of the game. Even at the top level. You have to know that a player's gonna come back if they know that they're in a physical battle. That is summary to clip this one in again. Simic the target, it's just over him. Which will mean Woodlands will have a chance to clear their lines, but sensibly, Ismadi Mukhtar just lets that ball roll out, takes the throw quickly, and Reginaldo is allowed back on. There's the yellow card for Hazrin. He'll take that. He's done it before, and there's no doubts that he'd do it again. That's a fantastic challenge from Noazli Yusuf. Reginaldo. Back to full fitness, just plays it wide. That's a nice play. Nicely looking to get in, but Zaid defending quite well. Reginaldo. Simic. Ali Imran. Clips a good ball in. Dronka with a header away, though. and it's just firing into this near side no Asli Reginaldo didn't react to that one didn't think he was going to get that ball Drunker was right on the ball though by winning that one again the slow patient build up trying to take Woodlands out of the uh, Defensive shell trying to draw them out. Just cut wide by Yamamoto. Ali Imran breaking forwards. Losing out yet again though. Jerry fires it forwards to Pak Taiwan. Azrin Jelani. 
Plays a lovely ball forward to Jerry Bartholomew's. Tries to get him first time and easily cleared by Ratna Sufyan. Career seems to have moved sideways for Ratna, who was one of the big hopefuls coming through the ranks. It was a home United, if I'm not mistaken, a few years ago, where he didn't really live up to his full potential. He played in the 2001 Sea Games for Singapore, and uh, after that, he, he turned out for home United for a couple of years. But after that, his career, he just moved sideways, like you mentioned earlier. Well, we're having a little bit of a conflap down here. The fourth official has called the referee over for something, and Sonia Ahmad is not happy at all. Neither is your, but both have gone back to their technical area. Sonia just trying to have the last word with your. You're just sitting down and ignoring him, as you do. He hopes that his team scores from this and then we'll say something back. You've been there, haven't you? Yes. You've been there, exactly. I know, because I can see there's a smile on your face. You're just desperate for your team to notch here, and that's exactly what Jorg will be hoping for. It's a dangerous position with the big guns forwards. It's whipped into the far post, but... The angle wasn't there really, and Joey Sim had absolutely no problems in claiming that one. So another wasted opportunity really for Woodlands. Oh, that's a real pretty because I expected Sazali with his left foot, cultured left foot that is, uh, putting in the ball that would give the Sinkang defence problems. But he was just straight into Joey's arms and he said thank you. Long range shot comes in and we know that... Yazid Yassin isn't the tallest goalkeeper in the world, but Harry Sumri got himself half a yard there, pulled the trigger, and wasn't a million miles away. Yeah, and you'd be surprised at the amount of space and time that he had to whack the ball at uh, Yazid's goal. Look at that space and time that he has. And yes, Yazid was backtracking, back paddling, trying not to get caught out. Fortunately, he went over the bar. Young, Har I said young Haris Sumri, he's no more young because he used to play with Tiong Baru and Tanyong Paga in the early, uh, the mid 90s. Uh, he's come a long way since then. Now he's one of the key players for Senka. 30 year old, almost coming to the veteran stage of his career. He still looks young though and he's moving like a youngster. I heard that his reports back on the bleep test were very, very good so. It's always good that players that do get a little bit older, they have to keep themselves in shape now to prolong their career. Yeah. Two balls on the pitch, so the referee saying, can we get one off, please? So Joey Sim flicks one over. The ball boy did ever so well to stop that going down the, uh, the gully that's over there. Reginaldo flicks it on, but because he came deep, there was no one going in behind him, which means that Zaid has a lot of space on this near side to try and prong an attack for Woodlands. Fadzu, nice little layoff inside. Nakamura just waits for support. As Jelani just fires it wide. Pate won. Bartholomew's on the overlap. And it's come to a stop and a standstill again, so as Jelani looks to switch this one. Zai did well to get on his bike to keep that one in play. Drunkat. Nakamura. Zaid. Just came inside and tried to tuck it up the line, but the channel was already closed and blocked down. Yeah, there was some Zaid's weaker right foot uh, and nearly caused the team a lot of problems because the whole team was high up and he gave away possession in such a dangerous area. Fortunately, they were not punished. Winston Yap with the ball forwards, flipped on by Reginaldo, looking for the free kick. And though he's in a game tonight. <laughs> yeah, what is he complaining about? He got in front of uh, Tonka, put in a very good header. His forwards didn't read him. That's, uh, that was where the problem was, not with the tackle or the, with the challenge by uh, Donka. The challenge is always going to come as well, isn't it? If you're an attacker and you get in front of that defender, you know the defender's going for the ball as well. So it's fair game. Aslan Jelani just gets it out of his feet. Azmi with a long searching ball forwards, but that's easily dealt with by Noyazli. 
So just the last five or ten minutes, we've reverted to giving the ball back to each other. It's just that final pass, isn't it? It's just lacking from both sides. If they could sort that out, we'd have one or two goals here and probably one or two clearer cut chances. Because it hasn't been a bad game at all. It's been very, very interesting, very tactical and very condensed in the middle of the park, which has made for an entertaining game, which is something that you always get when you come and watch the S-League live. Something you also get as well is the H2O Ultimate Move Contest. Don't forget to go online. 12 different S-League players executing 12 different football freestyle moves. They're all at an iconic locations in Singapore. Central Mall, the bridge at Clark Quay, Changi Airport, the Esplanade, Far East Plaza, Merlion, Mount Faber, the National Stadium, Skate Park, Sentosa, Tionbaru Estate and Zouk. All places you can go and catch them doing this. And don't forget the best way for you to get involved and win some fantastic prizes is to log on to the website www.sleague.com. Look for the H2O Ultimate Move banner, click on it, have your vote and you could stand to win some great prizes here's Simic almost threaded it through it was nearly a fantastic ball for Eduardo Momoto flicks the ball on here's Eduardo again played inside strong challenge from Nakamura oh the ball's bobbled around there and Yes, he was right on his toes and fires a fantastic ball forwards that releases Pak Taewon. Pak Taewon looks up, cuts inside, it's on his favourite left foot! And it's 1-0! <laughs> Pak Taewon cut inside, left his defender for dead, that's his tenth of the season and it all came. Who said that long balls in football don't work? Yazid Yazid. Fired a 70-yard kick out of his hands. Pate one was on his toes, burst onto that loose ball and fired it home. And Woodlands find themselves leading by a goal to nil. What a crucial time to score a goal. 42 minutes, 40 second minute. Uh, you must give Yazid credit because he saw the possibility because the Sinkang backline was pushed up very high. And this long ball, Pate one took his time, created the space for himself and what a cracker. You'll see from this angle how good and clinical it was. It looked for support, it wasn't there. Stepped inside two players, and rather than going for that far corner, just pulled his foot around the ball to beat the keeper at his near post. Joey Sim won't be pleased at being beaten at his near post there, but take nothing away from that strike. That's his tenth of the season, and that's Partey one, the leading goal scorer for Woodlands. More importantly, it has changed both coaches' half-time team talks. Yeah, you can just imagine what Swandi would have been thinking about. Let's keep it tight. Let's try and get that odd goal out. But now the team has got to come out and try and get something in the second half if they don't equalise by the time the first uh, the whistle goes off. Will he get an assist for that? Does it? He must do. He I mean, should, it was yeah. a 70 yard pass, wasn't it? Really? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. He does not just back into space, yeah, you're right. He, he saw it early, he sprinted to the edge of his box and he, he fired it downfield. <laughs> One that you would want in your fantasy league team. Extra points for assists. The points here could be going to Woodlands. We're entering the final minute of this first half. There is another half to go, of course. You're a very, very happy man there. Just trying to do the best that they can at the moment. Do have a few injuries, that much we do know. They are looking forward to the big occasion that they've got coming up in November, though. Fadzu. Just looked as though he could have put himself in there a little bit more to take that ball. Have Senkan got it in them to come back. Constantia. Morazli, who hasn't had a bad first half at all, 
to Hadi Sumner, who hasn't had a bad first half, if we're being honest. Drunk uh, judged to have handled the ball as the 45 minutes is up. There will be one minute of stoppage time to be added at the end of this first half. You said what a time to score with three minutes to go to the half, but what a time this would be if Simic can deliver a quality ball and Senkan could get back on level terms. Simic, it's just too low and too flat. That will allow Woodlands to push up a bit. Simic fires it forwards again. Johnny Bartholomew's can only head it straight back into the middle and somehow it's found its way to this near, play, uh, near side. Tazali Saleh flicks it forwards. Pat Taiwan again, he twists and turns. Pat Taiwan waits for support. Didn't deliver the appropriate pass and Jerry Bartholomew's fires over. But Fadzu made a great run in support. If only he had a right foot, Park. Yeah, well, what a quick counter attack. I think this is something, again, look, Sazali plays it right through the two centre backs. Uh, they they, they won't take it with his hand. There's no calls for that, but Fadzu has. Maybe the pace of the ball could have been, the weight of the ball could have been a bit more harder. That would have given. Uh, Fadzu a better chance to strike and go. There is the half-time whistle, as blown by Zayed Hussain. It sees us separated by the solitary goal that came on 42 minutes. Yazid Yassin picking the goal, the ball up from his own goal line, running to the edge of his box, firing it 70 yards downfield. Partey one did the rest, turned his defender inside out. At half-time here in the NTUC in Kumyo's S League 2008, that means it's Woodlands Wellington 1, Senkang Pungal 0. Some call these men the greatest entertainers on earth. Flying without wings, defying physical limitations. But the risks these men take are great. Yes, this is entertainment, but the hazards are real. No matter who you are, whatever you do, please don't try this at home. Hey bro, wow, it's been a long time since we last played football, huh? Yeah, man. Hey, remember when we make fun of Singapore Premier League and their fans? <laughs> Funny lah, all cannot take joke. If only we can settle the score once and for all, then they have nothing to say. The Singapore football fans also got nothing to say. Huh? Yeah, anyway, this uh, Lion City Sailors, them covered lah. Until now, they want to challenge us and never give it to us. Can you get the cricket some more, though? <laughs> oh, yeah, confirm they won't dare take up a challenge. <laughs> It can't be! Can it be? It might be! You want us? You got us. Come on! We are ready. We need to talk so much, bro. Let's go. I'm ready. Are you ready? It's the showdown you've been waiting for. It's time for the Celebrity Smackdown. S-Gag vs Lion City Sailors, who will come out on top? Find out Sunday at the Grand Finals of the first ever ESPL Tournament, live on Facebook from 2pm. Welcome back to the Jalambasar Stadium. Currently 1-0 here to Woodlands Wellington. Just wonder if we'll see any changes at the start of this half or whether they will wait five or ten minutes. What do you think was said at half-time, Savaji? I'm sure Swandi would have said that uh, he should get the team uh, focusing on being caught off counter-attacks because uh, there were three or four occasions, especially towards the end, towards the closing part of the uh, second uh, first half that they were exposed with counter-attacks and I think that's something that Swandi would like to pay attention to but I think more importantly he will now try maybe try and push Simic up to partner Reginaldo because they have not been posing any threats words being exchanged in the centre of the pitch the referee Zaid Hussein who had a very good first half it has to be said just waiting for Senkang to finish their huddle. I think Senkang, if they really need to get something out of this game, they need to get Simic more up front, more forward. 
where he could cause problems with his uh, pinpoint passing ability and also his shooting uh, from long distance because that is his strength, his forte. So we're underway the second half then. Senkan kick off, kicking from right to left. Straight away, long ball hoofed forwards by Yamamoto. And that's going to be easy for Yazid Yassin to collect. Zaida likes to go back. Dronka, who's always available, just fires it to this near Say one turns and cuts inside, flicks it forwards, easily dealt with though by Winston Yap. John Cat easily deals with that one. And this half started off at a very, very slow tempo compared with the start of the game. Yamamoto plays it into Reginaldo. Nice little ball back inside and a speculative shot, it has to be said, from Harris Summary. Yes, I thought uh, Harris sends his chances there. Just the top of the box, crossed by uh, Reginaldo. Ball was just hanging up just nicely for him to volley it. Un unfortunately hit the bottom of the ball on the underside of the ball and gone over you just see it pop up there Dronko goes to close it down just wouldn't sit down quickly enough for Harris you know Paul we, we have always seen this uh, centre back and uh, striker competition competing against each other in this case it's Dronka and Reginaldo then sometimes you see the striker getting away to the other defender to see whether he could get the same treatment or he could maybe sneak an inch uh, from him it would be nice to see whether Reginaldo would want to do that and if he does how uh, Woodlands responds to that strong challenge there in the centre of the park a player's committed Fatsu going down under the pressure from Yamamoto going to be Hasrin Jelani, the only player to pick up a caution in the first half that will take this free kick. Big guns have gone forwards as well, so there are targets to hit for Jelani. Whips it in. Dronka was the target. Well headed away though. Danger not clear yet though. Bumbling around and just lashing it clear to clear his lines was Eduardo and there's a mistake there from Zaid which means Reginaldo can pick this up the red shirts breaking forwards now there's four of them in the box there's Simic who lets it go finds its way to Rosali and the impetus has gone now because the blue shirts are back and his summary looks to keep it Rosali Harris just going for the little nutmegs, not getting away with it. They still managed to retain possession though. Simic flips it out to Norazli, who's looking to push forwards. Bartholomew's with the header, but again given away. Simic picks it up in the middle of the park. Flips it out wide, Rosali. Fires one in, it's deep, looking for Reginaldo, it's over everybody. Zaid gets there. Goes to put his foot through the ball and well the challenge looked an innocuous one. Zaid looks as though he got caught but he's quickly to his feet. He looked uh, looked an innocent tackle actually. He didn't even touch it. But Zaid got the free kick that he wanted. Sometimes you wonder whether other players allowed to raise their leg that high. 
Yeah. With the ball wobbling there, why not? Well, the arm's up from the referee, so that's an indirect free kick. So you can only think it is for the raised foot. Because if it was anything more malicious, it would have been a direct free kick. Mazzali down the left-hand side trying to make inroads. Whips it into the near post. Dronka with a header, though. Bartholomew lets it bounce. Flips it forwards, but again, Ali Imran quickly onto this one. Moto keeps possession. Simic with time and space in the middle of the park. Ali Imran. Is it to Rosali? Ali Imran. The give and go. It's very, very tight though. The flag has gone up for offside, so. Lehman just too keen to get in there behind the defender. Woodland's taking their time over this one. Normally, as coaches, we tell that the team at halftime try and keep it. Don't allow them to score in the first 15 minutes, and this game is yours. And that looks like what Woodland's is trying to do, trying to keep it very safe at the back. But in the event that uh, Sengkang pushes up too high, they are ready to punish them with a quick lightning counter-attack. Clip forwards, but easily dealt with again by Noaz Lee Yusof. Trying to get on that, Jonka in strong in the challenge as well. Manages just to poke it away. Nakamura did well to help his partner. And Ginaldo, who's dropped a little bit deeper. Eduardo. Strong challenge there from Nakamura. Free kick given against. The blue side. <laughs> Winston is uh, just unsure who, who to pass the ball <laughs> to. There is movement up front. All you've got to do is keep possession, just give it to Simic if he's come short for the ball. Reginaldo with a little flick out there of the foot, which was a little bit naughty, went unnoticed by the referee. You do all your tricks like that, but if you don't keep possession, then it's not worth the paper it's written on. That was a strong committed challenge there from the centre-back, Azmi Mahmoud. No prisoners taken there, and the veteran 32-year-old defender wasn't going to pull out of that one. Really a big, big error there from Joey Sim. He's coming up with a layoff, and... Well, that had a big blue flashing light on top of that one. We are going to see a change. Azrin Jelani is coming off. Aslan Alpat will come on. Yeah, I think Aslan is more of a workhorse. I think uh, York might be looking at trying to protect the lead. At the same time, give a lot of... Uh, fight in midfield because Aslan is well known for that. Well, it's a defensive midfield player for a defender, so trying to shore things up a little bit. That's a good ball. Pato One finds himself in the box and the keeper, Joey Sim, came a long way and was lucky not to concede a penalty there. It was a coin together of the two players, but See Pat, the first one to react there. 
Flicks it round the keeper. It's a good job the keeper came though. Yeah, I think Park was first to the ball. But what was Ali Imran doing? That was his man. Didn't track his man. Just let him go through. And fortunately not punished because uh, although he got his foot to the ball first, uh, Park, uh, it, it was way off target. But that is also because of Joey's uh, bravery coming off the line. Some of the players electing to take on some fluids. Joey Sim with a little bang on the side of his head there. He showed a bit of bravery coming off his line to be strong there. Joey, one of those young players who was with Home United last year, didn't see very much of playing time because of uh, the presence of Lionel Lewis and of course Rijuan Fata. Decided now at the age of 21 that he needs to go out and start, go to a club where he can play more games and I think he's now come to Sengkang looking for that opportunity and then been given that opportunity. And play more games and be tested a lot more. That's for sure, it'll certainly back his credentials up. Nothing more, just flicks it wide. Smiley just couldn't get that under control. They do, however, win the throw. This is frustrating uh, for the throw-ins. You try and keep possession. Okay, he got he got possession because of uh, Ali Imran's poor clearance. But here, this is why are people running away from where the throw is and giving it away again? You're under no pressure at throw-ins. It almost looks like they're trying to kill the game now. Reginaldo trying to get onto the end, and he does. He gets onto the end of this. Reginaldo pulls the trigger, but pulls it wide. That's a third shot he's had from outside the box. None yet to hit the target, and that's disappointing from the Brazilian. To Singh Kang's uh, discredit, in fact, if I can say that, the chances that they've created are not, not by their own making, it's more through mistakes from Mutens. And I think Singh Kang will have to, I, my opinion, Simic has got to take more uh, responsibility in this game. He's just floating amongst all the other players in the midfield. There is Simic just losing out in that challenge, wanting the free kick, not getting it from the referee. Sazali in the middle of the park, Nakamura gets fouled, and Simic there is going to get a yellow card, and that's bore out of frustration for two moments ago, not getting the decision that he wanted. It's a pity because Simic is a very good player, I've seen him uh, in many games, really controlling the game for Senkan. Uh, but today he's just, uh, he's just uh, turned up. Ali Imran will be coming off. So the Andy Naib will be coming on. Oh, sorry, no. Mahmoud Hashim is coming on. That will mean that Senkang will have to rejuggle their formation a little bit, and straight away you can see. Zoe Eduardo is the one that's uh, slotted in there. Flag's gone up. Reginaldo uses some choice Brazilian language. I know that because of spending time with Perez de Oliveira. He taught me a word or two that uh, can't be repeated on air, unfortunately. Bartholomew's. We are going to see the introduction in a few moments of Lacard, which is a big, big plus for Woodlands. Yeah, York is uh, slowly trying to nurse Lacard back to fitness, giving him 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there to get him ready for the cup final. But that is the big one for Woodlands for this season. Well, he did say to me before the game, he said he gave him 15 minutes in the last game. He might give him a little bit longer this time just to... As you've said, give him a little bit of game time because he's still not 100% fit, but has got to keep up his levels of fitness. And we're 
Yamamoto. Frank Simic. A little back going on there with Bazali. It is Mandy. A nice little battle as well. Eduardo has been thrust at left back now. Mahmoud has been pushed into the right hand side of midfield. Here is the substitute, Mahmoud. Nice little touch, lovely little ball back inside as well, looking for Nurazli. It's going to be a throw in. We are going to see that change now. Padzu is going to come off. Then he walks gingerly over. Lockhart, last year's leading scorer. Currently with six this campaign, albeit due to injury, will be on. Lockhart's absence for Woodlands uh, for many games in this season's league has been a big blow for uh, Woodlands because he's among one of the best goal scorers in this league. Yes! And he's a different kind of player from Fadzu. Fadzu chases everything. Lockhart gets into very good positions. And if the service is right, especially from Aki and uh, Park Tewun, then you can see uh, Lockhart among the goals tonight. There's another one of those giant kicks that Yazid has thrown down there. Sinyap wins the header. Simic clears it all up. Flick forwards from Yamamoto. Challenge is flying in as Park Day one picks this one up. Was in an offside position coming back to an onside, so that's going to be a free kick to Senkang. Just think that they need to up the tempo just a little bit, don't they, to try and cause Woodlands a problem and get back into this game. Yeah, I think Woodlands is very happy when uh, Senkang has the ball in the defending third and just knocking it. Uh, there's not enough movement for Woodlands, uh, or rather for Senkang when they have possession from the back. And that seems to be their problem. And then there's a resort to this, which uh, suits uh, Azmi, Yazid, Donka, easy, because this is a piece of cake for them. It's a little bit sloppy, has to be said. For the centre half, Asmi Mahmoud. Kamamoto. Plays it wide, Rosali, who has been lively down this left-hand side. Simic. Elects to go the other way, skips past the challenge, threads it down the line. No flag, so play on. Rosali with the ball in. Dronka heads it clear. Picked up in the middle of the park under no pressure by Rosali Sale. Here he is again, skips past the challenge. Whistle's gone for the little tug on the shirt. Norazli a little bit too close there. Well, Colin who plays it forward. Part two one works hard to win it back. Nakamura just helps it back on on its way. Blackard saying here, give it to my feet. That's what you're talking about, a total different player, isn't it, Savaji, about how instead of wanting the ball behind, he wants everything into him and he can hold it up and bring others into play. That's right, that's his strength. And his summary, Reginaldo. Plays the substitute in. Mahmoudou picks the ball up yet again. They've been allowed a little bit of time and space here. Senkang. Rizali on the left. Looks to go on the outside. Gets a great ball into the box. The header. And it was a free one because it got in front of the defender. Came in from Harry Summary. But 
just headed it wide. A chance now. Yeah, again, it is good work by Razali down the flank, getting past and under tremendous pressure, putting this cross in. And Hari Sam Sumri, who would have expected him to outjump Donka there? It's a great ball whipped in. Fantastic ball. Dronka still touched time, making sure it wasn't a completely free header though. And something if you're a young defender out there watching. Even if you aren't going to win it, you must try and make an attempt or at least try and put the opponent off. That's exactly what Dronka did. Reginaldo in the hole. Dronka just lent on him there and Reginaldo went to ground. At the moment, Sinkang has a lot of possession from the defending third to the mid middle third, and they just keep knocking the ball in front of the Woodland defence. Nobody is willing to make those runs. Just now, um, Reginaldo did it. He got a free kick as a result. In a very good position for them. And now with uh, Winston Yap and Ratna Suvel up there, with uh, Hiro, Hiroyuki up there, they may have some uh, possibilities from this uh, resulting free kick. Whipped in dangerously, but Yazid came. It was a foul there. Can only think that it was because of the challenge that was put in from Ratna Sofyan. Everybody's at it, aren't they? The holding, the tugging, the pulling. Yazid didn't get it cleanly enough, so a bit of a let off there. I thought it was a hand that actually, because I, I found nothing wrong with the challenge on Yazid, because the player who was closest to Yazid was his own defender. I think there was a hand out there, and I think it was Reginaldo whose hand came off to strike the ball. Well, Reginaldo just off the ball there, moaning with his striking partner, had his summary. And that doesn't seem to be too happy. Again, putting the header. Taken quickly and just clipped into the box, but easily dealt with by Azmi Mahmoud. It's a strong challenge. Play allowed to continue. Simic just lays it off, and well, that can only be described as an awful shot because it's gone out for a throw in by the substitute. Mahmoud has him. Yeah, again, you can see that <clears throat> there's no intention to try and run behind the Woodlands defender. And I think that's where they will may get dividends from their efforts. Uh, just sitting outside, looking looking for the ball to the feet and hitting the ball from these kind of distances. Unless you get specialists like uh, Simic who can attack them from 30, 40 yards. Free kick not given there. Simic losing out, but still winning the throw. A little bit of confusion down there on the pitch. No free kick, it's a throw in. Everybody's leaving it for everybody else. This is surely playing into the hands of Woodlands, who will want a stop-start game if they want to take all three points from this one. Lockhart just fe feeds the ball. Here's Park. Good solid tackle by Radna Sufia. Needed to be. And this is what they need to do. They need to run, start getting behind the Woodlands defence, and then maybe they get three kicks, they get crosses behind the defence ball, possibly. Simic with the ball in. Reginaldo with half a yard of space is in offside position though. That could have changed it. Zaid summed that one up, clasping his hands together above his head, saying thanks for that one. That's very, very close. Yeah, well, you wonder who played the ball last. Yeah, okay. Once the ball's been played forwards, yeah. Yeah. he is in an offside position, so the flag has to go up. So the official spot on with that one. Rata! Rata! 
But again, it just brings up that rule, doesn't it? The offside rule and how complicated and complex it is and the simplicity that it was introduced and how it's all changed now. Is he, isn't he interfering with play? Yeah. Is he in an offside position coming back to gain an advantage? It's a lovely ball forwards. Lacard looks as though he could be in. Didn't want to overcommit himself there and get injured again. Ratner coming across and dealing with that one like he had to. There's the Dolphin. You saw him down on the pitch at half time, jumping around, trying to get the fans excited and going. That's some great prizes to be won if you do come down and watch a game live, particularly Friday night football. Face painting, popcorn for the kids, ice creams, everything is down here. So if you get the chance, come down and support your team. It's very, very much needed and very much appreciated. There's nothing like actually being there. So just over 20 minutes to go with stoppage time. Still Woodlands leading by that goal scored in the 42nd minute by Park Tae Won. Here's Simic. Threads it wide. Zali looks to go on the outside yet again and gets a soft free kick there. Yeah, you can see his body is just wondering why the referee gave that free kick. Razali uh, appealed for it and he got it, but there was no obstruction, no way. And York down by the touchline is livid. He's not happy at all there, is he? And he's probably got every right to beat. You don't have to beat your man to get a cross in. David Beckham proved that for many, many years, that if you get half a yard and you've got quality and you deliver it, then anything could happen. Well, will quality be delivered here from Harris Summary? It's needed. Can Senkang score their 11th goal of the season? Whipped in, dangerous. Yazzie comes and has a little flap. Danger not cleared yet. There's a player down and a little bit of a nudge in the back there. Reginaldo is down, we can tell by the green boots. Gingerly get into his feet. It was a good ball played by Hamri Sumri, Haris Sumri into the far post. Uh, Reginaldo jumped highest actually, but he landed very, very awkwardly, very hard on the surface. Uh, and the referee has decided to give a free kick there. And a little bit niggly now. A little bit of frustration from players on both teams. Just a little nudge here and a little poke there. Which is why the ebb and flow is really suiting Woodlands at the moment. Senkang really need to try and keep the ball in play and try and cause a problem or two here or there. kick delivered and it's not a bad ball in either it was an important header that was flipped just wide from Yamamoto Zaid just rolls it inside drilled in great ball Pate one that's a great goal as the Korean cut in from the right hand side attack the ball what a fantastic finish that is that's his second of the night that's his 11th this season more importantly than that, it's given Woodlands a 2 0 lead that surely they will not blow. Yep, what a great goal. I mean, uh, ball comes back for Sazari to, to send it in with his left foot. But you wonder where the marking was because there was absolutely no marking there. And Park uh, Tewood finished it with a plum. Fantastic header, brilliant ball whipped in, but look at the bravery to go and get in front of your defender and attack the ball. That's exactly what he did. 
Senkan caught ball watching and caught cold. Who was that? It was the 10th Simic who should have been tracking the man. Didn't track him and Senkan get punished. Well, for every action, there is a reaction. And that's exactly what Senkang have to do here. They have to react. Otherwise, they're going to find themselves still sitting just above the bottom place in the table. They were anyway, but they wanted to go into the Dali and Sida game knowing that the three points there could actually propel them level on points and just above them in the table. But this defeat, if it stays this way, will damage any hopes of that. We are going to see another change in a second. Sobri Mazlan will come on in a second as the flag goes up as Pato One is in search of his hat trick. He has done well uh, for this in this match, hasn't he? Uh, Pato One has been out with some injuries this season, but always the player who is so nice to watch, so good to watch, pops up to score some great goals like he did today, and then also creates chances for his teammates. Well, you can see quite clearly here, not happy at all is Reginaldo of being bought off. And Sobri Mizelan will come on to replace him. Well, you did say a little bit earlier if Lux could kill. He does not look happy at all with that decision. And in fact, gives a, an evil gaze down to the bench down to the manager and throws a water bottle down he's absolutely disgusted with that decision some discipline issues at Senkang that will need to be addressed that can only be addressed after this game though Lacard looking to keep possession and does looking to break forwards now is Saleh Nakamura Woodland's on a high now whips it in that's a great ball whipped in as well and that's the run that you were talking about earlier, Savaji, that Lacard knows about to get in front of the goalkeeper there and was just half a yard off that one. Like the match practice. And there is good, good understanding between uh, Aki because no one expected Aki to do anything uh, as he was closely attended to by a defender. But Aki knew where the space was. Lacard knew where the space was. And very fortunately for uh, St. Kang, it's an offside decision. Partey one looking to twist and turn on the linesman flag straight away being pulled back Partey one just saying there to Eduardo you can have me sure afterwards if you want yeah that will be a prize shirt for tonight's game because I think, I think he's done well Going to be in with a shout for the Man of the Match award, along with the likes of Dronka. Nakamura's worked hard in the middle of the park. Zaid's done all right at left back. Yazid with that fantastic pass to set up the first goal. There is Nakamura. Lockhart, lovely little interchange of passing. The ball goes out wide. Shazali. Aslan. Even Zaid's joining in now and pushing a little bit further forwards. Gets a good cross in. Lockhart! Again, just half a yard off the pace, just because of lack of match practice. Yeah, but again, like a typical striker who has got some great, great glamorous goals, he saw the possibility, and why not? But you're right, Paul. Like sharpness. That'll come. That'll come. A few more games. A little bit more game time. A little bit more exercise as we see. A substitution made. Shadi Muzak comes on. Ismadi Mukhtar goes off. So that's the three substitutes used for Woodlands. Big looping one as well, but headed away and headed clear. It was an important header from Shelly Muzza, who's just come on. 
Nice ball into Lockhart. The little flick to Nakamura or Pate one. Pate one just checks back. Now gives it to Nakamura. On the overlap is the substitute, Shadi Muza. He gets the ball. Can he deliver quality? Yes, he can. That's a great ball in. Winston Yap with a header. Danger not clear yet, though. That was the best passage of play that we've seen in this game so far from either side. Real flowing football that was. Excellent move down the, 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 down the flank and I think the, it was a very good cross. I thought Lakat moved into early. If he just stayed away and then attacked the ball as it came, he may have had better, uh, a better chance of scoring a goal there. But wonderful play. It looks like all Woodlands now because Sengkang are really on the back foot, pushed back, two goals down, have taken their best striker out of the game, uh, substituted. Well, there could be a chance of a break here as Azali picks up the ball, waits for support. You can see the body language of uh, the Sengkang players not exuberant enough at the moment, his Simic who gets dispossessed now. If that's a yellow card, that's going to be a red. Lockhart doing what we don't like to see, and that's just eight into the referee for a card. The referee's going to make a decision. He can make a decision. Simic is a very lucky man if he stays on the pitch. It's frustration from that challenge, wasn't it? Absolutely, and uh, you can see that there. This is where the he's got no chance to get the ball. The player's got in front of him, and he pulls him back. In many cases, that would have been a yellow card. Yeah, it's frustration all right because uh, Sengkang, nothing is working for them. The team is not ticking, they, they just don't have... They have a lot of spirit, I must say, but just the quality is lacking. Ball whipped in, Lakar was the target, goes up strongly. And just goes and picks up Norazli. It, to be fair, has not a bad game there at right back. Forwards and again, as Ali the target wins the corner. I'm telling you, can't believe that decision. Neither can the youngster, Shari Muzo, who's just come on. It's Harris again to take the corner. What can they do this time? Because they need to get the ball away from the Donkas and the Asmi one with the players must take them away from key areas. Ball's whipped in and no one attacking Yazid, who looks to get them going very, very quickly again. Wants another assist to his name. Throws it out, bursting forwards is Jonka. Pakte one. Look to step inside two players. Free kick not given. Could be a chance here for Senkang. That was a bit of a rush challenge from Zaid, but play allowed to continue. Mahmoud finds Simic. Back to Mahmoud. Better from Senkang, looking to try and keep the ball and create opportunities and problems. And then just that final delivery letting them down. I'd say one with a great touch, but just couldn't get it out of his feet. I'll tell you what, this, even the, some of the best players will struggle uh, with the ball like that on this pitch. But he's got a smile on his face, he's got two goals to his credit, three points in the back, more or less. Surely they're not going to throw this one away. Well, at least seven minutes left. Uh, I don't see Sengkang having anything in the armour to, to, to cause uh, an upset now. What we do know, football is a very, very funny game and stranger things have happened. Just cast your mind back to 1999 and the final two minutes of that European Cup final which saw Man United, who were totally dead and buried, come back against a resilient by Munich side so it does happen even to the best sides nice ball down the line but maybe just a little bit overplayed yes it was and it meant that Mamu just couldn't get there so again a little bit disappointing from Senkang
Kirat looks none the worse for his injury, Paul. And you can see he's still up there, brimming with a lot of confidence, jumping, getting all these aerial balls. And when we saw that uh, acrobatic bicycle kick, it shows that he's slowly coming back. And I think uh, give him a couple more games, he'll be back to his main uh, threat, uh, main strength. He's just game time that he needs, along with the rest in between, because when you do sustain injuries like that, they don't go away overnight. Well, now Eduardo's been naughty because he's just blasted the ball at him, to be fair. Shelly Muzza, although he didn't retreat, so letter of the law states that he could have received a yellow card there. But again, we don't like players just stating to the officials to show a yellow card. That's very, very unsporting. The referee has to make those decisions himself. You're right, Paul. And what, what do you think about that? A player that does that should be... I mean, was it not a FIFA directive that they tried to bring in? If a player does that just state, then you show them the yellow card yeah. for, for unsporting behaviour. Exactly, because if he's asking for the yellow card, give it to him. That, that should be the, 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 the rule. But I do not know why they don't do it, because it, you're right, especially on national TV, you watch it, you will see a fellow professional trying to get a player sent off or get a card. It just doesn't... Uh, it doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah. It spoils the game. We talk about fair play, huh? It's only fair if you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> well, Salani can testify to that with the goal that they scored the other week in the Champions League. If you saw the ball was kicked out of play, yet they took the throw in and Lionel Messi went on to score a goal and there's been absolute uproar in Europe about that, about fair play. This is nice from Woodlands. Everything apart from that last pass out wide from Pak Taewon, but he'll be forgiven for that one. Two-goal hero for Woodlands tonight. Dropping into an anchor in midfield role now. Uh, Simic picks up the ball. Plays it wide. It's a lovely pass as well. He does pass a very, very good ball, Simic. Likes to rattle it into the target and say, you deal with it. Here he is again. It's the Nyap. Nakamura trying to get in on the action. Simic picks it up. 30 yards from goal. Likes to keep it. Yamamoto plays it into Sobri. Sobri out muscle there by the experience of Azmi. Who elects just to slow it down and just pass it wide. Sazali elects to go back home. Newell up on his feet, just asking his players to pass the ball around. And we enter the last 90 seconds plus stoppage time of this contest and three points you have to feel will only be going one way tonight. Lacard with a touch. Nakamura. Out wide. This is Ali again. When you look at uh, Woodlands, the way they dominate this game and the way they pass the ball around and the way, the way they keep possession, you just wonder why they're languishing so low in the table. But this is a very good side, comprising very good individuals. It has to be said that over the past few seasons, that's been uh, asked on many occasions. do expect them to be up there challenging of course we remember what happened last year when the points deduction really hurt them and affected them after they looked to be on to a, a very very promising finish they still finish well though fourth in the league which isn't to be snared at there's Winston yeah just playing it wide no Asley Besides, there's nowhere to go, so just turns around and comes back. What you would now expect uh, Sengkang to do is to try and change, try and get maybe more people forward, try and get the maybe go route one, you know? Because you, that, nothing seems to be working for them the way they are currently playing. So they really need to do something if they want to get something out of it. Even one goal. We end up 2-1, it's not too bad, convert to being down 2-0. 
90 minutes are up and there will be three minutes of stoppage time added at the end of this game. Just a little bit too tight there between Zaid and Pak Tewan. This game was over as a contest really when that second goal went in. You saw the body language of the Senkang players and it's so frustrating like you say, just to even score a goal because out of the 27, or this would be their 28th game this season, to have only scored 10 goals in a league that is a great league and it's a good league for scoring goals. When you have a look at the number of goals that all the other teams have scored, it's not a very, very good return for Senkang. I wonder if this win would uh, would put uh, Woodlands closer to the target of trying to be in the top half of the table. It lifts them up to seventh if it stays this way because of the goal difference. It will put them on minus 12. It'll give them 31 points, which means they leapfrog above the Young Lions and above Albrecht Nagata. This could be part A1 for his hat-trick, though. That's unselfish because he looked earlier, but Lacard couldn't make up the ground. But well, that would be respectable 31. It would put them eight points behind Gombach, who, again, have had a fantastic mid to end of season under the leadership of Sashi Kumar. John Yap then electing to bring in Darren Stewart. That's steadied the ship, and the discipline problems that are there aren't there anymore, which is why they are, are going to have a good go for it next year. Geylang United, as well, is another target that Woodlands are looking to chase down. So only three games to turn around and when you have a look at some of the fixtures that are coming up anything's possible of course the top four new boys in particular Savaji 64 goals scored only 27 conceded the second meanest defense as well still in with a shout of the title the super reds were to slip up and you win your game and that puts you right back on top uh, as I said, it's the Super Reds to lose now because they they are the driving seat, but they can lose matches because they've got uh, SAF and they've got Algorex and they've got Tampanese coming up. So we just need to keep winning our matches and hope for the best. Don't forget to go along to www.sleague.com and vote for your original H2O Ultimate Move contest. It's something that you can get involved in. You can win great prizes. That's something that you must do. Remember, the skills are being shown at 12 iconic places throughout Singapore. Get along to the website and cast your vote and try and be a winner. That, again, was a good ball to be played through, but no one ran through. And the chance went to a And that seems to have been Senkang Pongol's problem today. It's something that's going to carry on for the rest of the season it's going to be a hard slog for them but if it wasn't down for the two goals to that man there part Taiwan, then it wouldn't have been so easy for Woodlands Wellington let's just have a